What a dreary day. It's cold. It's snowing. You don't want to go anywhere. You just want to roll up on the couch. Maybe have some chili or a stew. But what if you want a steak? And your barbecue's in storage. Well, I have the solution. I'm going to show you how to convert your stove into an indoor grill and grill yourself a beautiful piece of steak that you'd swear it was the middle of July. Let me show you how. I love to barbecue. It's probably my favorite thing to do in the summer. I can't stand the heat. I know people out there probably get mad at me for saying that, but I'm more of a fall, spring kind of guy, but I love barbecuing. And the worst thing about the winter is that when it's cold, the last thing I want to do is be standing on my deck flipping burgers just to feed my need. So thankfully, we have different gadgets and contraptions that we can use to uh, simulate a barbecue experience. I have myself here a, an indoor grill. It's electric. There's the cable and there's an, uh, uh, an adjuster uh, for the temperature. Um, that thing could be running anywhere from $30 to $60, depending on if you get it on sale. The one thing I like about it is you can control the temperature pretty accurately. The one thing I don't like about it is it's pretty big and bulky and it's a bit of a challenge to, uh, um, to clean it. Uh, it does come apart in different pieces, like you could take the actual grill off. I don't know if you should be emerging it, merging it in water, uh, but you know, it, you know, you have to do something to clean it. Uh, this little jobby cost me about ten bucks. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a challenge to clean as well, uh, but this one is great. Uh, the reason why I like this one, uh, well, uh, you know, by the sheer fact that I can actually put it in the sink, uh, it's pretty quick and easy to get uh, in and off of the stove. You just basically cover two of your burners. Uh, you can have two different temperature controls. You can have your hot here and your maybe your medium heat there, and then in the middle where there's no uh, no element, that would be more of a cool zone. So if things are starting to cook quicker than others, you can move it to the middle. Uh, and then the other side, you flip it over, and you got yourself a pancake griddle. Um, again, you know you can have uh, maybe sausage at that end, pancakes at this end, or eggs or whatnot. The only thing is, is again the middle is the cool area, so. Uh, things in the middle are not going to cook as quick as they would in the uh, on the uh, on the ends. So uh, I was originally going to use this guy just because I've uh, recently used them and uh, I was more familiar with them. But since I've taken the time to dig that one out of storage and clean it up a bit, I think I'm going to give that one a try. Uh, but I do have some side dishes that are going to need some uh, prep work, so we're going to do those first. Uh, the grilling will be the last stage. It'll probably be the uh, quickest uh, stage. So. Let's uh, let's move on. We have uh, I have our Dijon roasted uh, potato recipe that I want to try. So let's uh, let's get the prep work going for that. All right, I have everything I need to make my uh, Dijon roasted uh, potatoes in my bowl. I already have about two tablespoons of Dijon uh, mustard. The, the recipe calls for Dijon mustard. This is more of a Dijon style mustard. Uh, as you probably aware, Dijon mustard has uh, some grains of the mustard seed in it. So. If you're wondering why that looks a little thin, that's that's why. As well as uh, two, uh, sorry, one teaspoon of uh, olive oil. It says to whisk the two together. Then on, uh, for your seasonings, you add a. Uh, you're looking at uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of paprika, about a half teaspoon of salt, which is hard to see on a white plate. A uh, quarter of a teaspoon or half teaspoon of uh, pepper, as well as a quarter of a teaspoon of uh, dried uh, thyme. So I'm going to add uh, my dry ingredients. Give that a good whisk, get everything incorporated. Okay. I'd say that's pretty good there. Uh, this calls for about a pound and a half of uh, baby new potatoes. Uh, you can use red, you can use white, yellow. Uh, I got a mixed bag that I found at the grocery store. Uh, it actually comes with uh, red, yellow, and uh, blue or purple potatoes, and it was already uh, pre-washed. Uh, I found that there was a lot of eyes on the potatoes, so I had to take the time and go through and cut the eyes off. But basically, you just uh, cut them up into cubes. Uh, you want the pieces to be roughly about the same size, that way they cook about the, the same time. You don't want pieces to burn before the others are uh, you know, not cooked. So you uh, dump those in, and you try to give it a good uh, stir. I could uh, give a 
bowl a little shake, but I don't want to uh, have my potatoes all over the counter, so just going to uh, use the spoon. Try to get as much of the mustard and mixture onto the potatoes. Uh, that way there I got all my, my flavor on the potato and not left in my bowl. So we're just going to keep uh, stirring here. I think that's probably going to be about the best I'm going to uh, get. So then from there, you transfer them over to a cookie sheet, uh, which I've already put my uh, spray, pardon the clumps, but my, uh, my spray does uh, seem to uh, splatter some good clumps. But just going to uh, put them onto the cookie sheet. You want to try to uh, spread them out. That way there they uh, each have their own opportunity to, uh, to cook. I don't think you'd want to have any of them stuck together. That's probably not going to help either. But the more space in between them, the more the heat can get in and around the potato and uh, cook, it, uh, cook it quicker. So this is going to now go into my oven. All right, here's my prepared potatoes. They're all uh, seasoned now and they're sitting on the nice uh, grease cookie sheet. So I'm going to take them to the oven. My oven is uh, preheated to uh, 425 degrees. They will uh, sit in the oven for about 35 minutes and you're gonna flip them about halfway through. Um, it doesn't say what rack to put them on, but I put mine on the middle rack. Uh, it's usually where most uh, food goes. So I'm gonna leave them there. And now my next uh, item to prepare is going to be uh, a garlic butter. Let me first point out that uh, this is gonna be completely optional. Uh, you know, if you're really trying to watch uh, your weight and your calories, uh, probably not the best idea to be making uh, butter to go on top of a steak. Uh, but you know, let's let's face it. We we all like to uh, treat ourselves once in a while, and uh, you know you couldn't go out and buy the prepaid or sorry pre-made um, garlic spread. Or if you don't have uh, have that and you just want to quickly make a spread, you can do it at home. So in here, I have about uh, three, maybe four tablespoons of butter. You could also use margarine. Uh, if you like a lot of garlic, then you can add a lot. But I'm going to add about a teaspoon of garlic. Uh, that's about a teaspoon, uh, maybe a little bit more. And uh, the little uh, green piece you see there, that's parsley. So I'm going to add about a uh, teaspoon there of parsley, and you're just basically going to uh, mix that up. And I apologize that I'm left-handed, but so you just uh, try to incorporate everything so it's uh, nice and evenly spread out. And that's your, uh, that's your garlic spread. So you put that back in the fridge, let it refrigerate. Uh, you could just leave it out as is, but you, you, you want to have your butter nice and cold before you put it on the, uh, the steak. Uh, the longer you let that sit in the fridge, uh, the more time it has for the, uh, the butter and the garlic and that to uh, incorporate together. So I'm going to throw that in the fridge, and uh, the next item I need to prepare, I'm going to uh, get my rub onto my steak. Here we have a 10 ounce uh, beef strip loin. Uh, to the average Joe, like myself, or what my former self used to be, that there, I would have been in heaven. Well, no, I'm, I'm more of a chicken guy, but still, that 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 to me was a good, uh, you know, good steak. I would have finished that whole thing uh, and never thought twice. Uh, nowadays, where I'm trying to really uh, watch what I eat, that to me actually is two meals. I will cut that in half because really, uh, a steak should only be about the size of the palm of your hands. You can see I can almost get two hands on this piece of steak. So uh, that there, that's going to be tonight's supper, and that'll be probably tomorrow's lunch or maybe even tomorrow night's uh, supper. Now you have a couple options for seasoning. You can make your own blend if you prefer. You can use the Montreal steak spice that you can get in the shakers. Uh, I used to use this all the time, but that one's very heavy in salt. I'm really trying to watch the salt intake. So I actually use a Tuscan rub that I had uh, that I'd purchased. The, I, I like this one. It has a good uh, good flavor. It has no salt in it. So if I want to add salt to my steak, then I can at least control what I'm putting on it and not sacrificing some of the flavor. Uh, my Tuscan rub uh, consists of basically uh, you know, a mixture of peppers and uh, herbs. So I'm just going to uh, I'll switch hands for the camera. Just going to give a generous uh, portion of seasoning on it. A good uh, chunk of this may even fall off when I'm cooking. Uh, you can try patting it down a bit just to keep it from uh, falling off. Uh, I'm going to uh, flip it. Now I don't want to get my uh, shaker dirty so I'm going to have to switch hands. But I'm going to uh, cover this side, and now I have myself a, a seasoned uh, piece of steak. Uh, I'm going to put my steak aside. I usually uh, I don't want my steak to get room temperature before I cook it because obviously then you're uh, putting yourself at risk with the uh, bacteria. But I usually don't put my cold steaks directly on the heat, 
So I'm going to put that aside for a couple minutes. I got uh, one other side dish that I need to get ready, so we're going to go on to uh, chopping up some, uh, some peppers and some onions for the grill as well.